Hey, Southwest kids. It is so great to be with you. I hope you have had a great week and are planning on having a great day today. Um, we get, are going to talk about Moses, okay? We are done talking about Joseph and um, what a great story um, it is in the Bible about Joseph, but we get to move on to Moses. And Moses is found in, does anybody know what book the story of Moses starts in? It starts in Exodus, okay? And so the first uh, part of the lessons the, where Joseph was in, his um, story was told in what book? Genesis. And what um, book of the Bible, what's the very first book of the Bible? Genesis, because what? What does the word Genesis mean? Yes, it means in the beginning, okay? And so this is the second book. It goes Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, okay? So we get to do Exodus this time, all right? And we are going to talk about um, when God calls you to be a leader, you need to say yes. I will be a leader for you, God, okay? And we're gonna, uh, the memory verse is Numbers 12, three, and it says, now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. And then we've got Philippians 2, three through four, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only at your own interest, but also to the interest of others. So in both of those verses we just read, I uh, there was humble in uh, Numbers 12, 3, and then in Philippians 2, 3, it said, but in humility. So I think there may be a little theme there about being humble and uh, um, having humility, okay? So we are going to go on and start. Now we're going to, uh, the uh, curriculum has it where Moses' life is kind of broke down into two different sections of his life. The first 40 years of his life and then the second 40 years of his life. How many of you out there are um, over 40 years old? Okay, most of you are not. You're, most of you are um, under 40 years old. So um, we're going to talk about the first part of no, um, Moses' life. And, um, then, and I'm going to start with, um, does anybody even, can you think of anything that even comes to your mind when you think about Moses? Um, maybe the Ten Commandments? Maybe when he was a baby, you remember um, what happened to him when he was a baby? So a couple of different things might come to your mind when you think of Moses. But um, Moses was born in Egypt during a time of slavery of the Jewish people, okay? And the king of Egypt, who was Pharaoh, noticed how the Jewish slave population was growing very quickly. There was a lot of them, a lot of Jewish people that were slaves, and they were, they were just becoming more and more. And because Pharaoh was scared that the slaves were going to take over Egypt, he decreed that all boy Hebrew babies would be drowned at birth, okay? And so Jochebed, that was Moses' mother, she loved her baby. She loved her baby Moses, and she was desperate to save his life. She did not want to drown him in the river, and so she hid him for three months, and then she came up with a plan how to save his life, and I'm going to read Exodus uh, 1 and verses 1 through 10, and it says, there are, these are the names of the sons of Israel who entered Egypt with Jacob, each with his family, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. You recognize that song? I kind of sang a little tune with it. 
These descendants of Jacob numbered 70 in all, and Joseph was already in Egypt. Now Joseph and all his brothers and all the generations died, but the Israelites were fruitful and multiplied great, greatly and became exceedingly numerous so that the land was filled with them. Then a new king who did not know about Joseph. Okay, we studied all about Joseph. I can ask you anything about Joseph and you're gonna know the answer, aren't you? Yes, you are. Okay, so Joseph, you remember, gave interpreted the dreams and said there was gonna be seven years of plenty and then seven years of drought. And so he went and saved and made barns and collected all the food. So when the seven years of drought came, he had everything saved up and he was able to feed all of the land. And, um, and what was the reason? What did he give credit to? all the whole time that he was alive. Who did Joseph get credit to? Yes, God, that is right. And so he loved God and he obeyed God and he gave God all the glory all the time. And so the, um, the kings all knew the reason why they were so successful and they were having um, you know, the years of plenty. And then when the drought came, they were, they were in okay shape because God had helped, um, Joseph know what to do. But now in verse eight, it says, then a new king, king who did not know about Joseph come to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them or they will become in even more numerous than uh, numerous. And if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and they will fight us and they will leave the country. Okay, so he was worried, wasn't he? And he wasn't giving any of the credit to God either. And so um, Moses was born um, in Egypt. Okay, we've already said that. So do you think it's a coincidence that the future leader of the Jewish nation was raised as a prince of Egypt? Okay, I don't know if anybody, have y'all seen that movie, The Prince of Egypt? Um, perhaps if he had grown up as a slave, he might not have had the vision, the courage, and the education to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Do you think it's a coincidence that his very own mother was hired by Pharaoh's daughter to take care of her son? We know that it's no coincidence that Moses is part of the one story of the Bible. And that God's plan to bring Jesus to a sinful world to give us salvation. And who was a part of that one plan? Moses. Yeah. So the period of time um, that Moses lived, there's never been, it says right here, that there's been a kingdom like Egypt. During that time of Moses, Egypt was one of the richest and most powerful countries in the world. It was, it had lots and lots of money and it had lots of power. And, um, and uh, Moses was brought up as an adopted grandson um, of a little God on earth. And the, um, was part of Pharaoh's, you know, family. And he was in the Egyptian uh, empire. And um, so he was, you know, pampered. He had plenty to eat. He um, was educated and all these things because he lived in the palace. And it says in Acts 7, 22, Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians as, and was powerful in speech in actions, okay? So he was, he went to the best schools and he uh, got to learn from the top smartest people all of, all of Egypt. Um, he got to learn from them. 
And as a prince of Egypt, it is likely that he attended um, the best schools, like I said. And he would have learned astronomy, architecture, trigonometry, medicine, chemistry, and also hyperglyphics. Um, that was the Egyptian language that they did. And um, he was also probably trained to be a fighter and a warrior and uh, he could be in combat. He was probably trained by the best people um, that could fight as well. So, um, I'm going to read Exodus 1, 6 through 14. Okay, so we had already read the through the 10. So I'm going to start in verse 11. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor, and they built uh, Phinehem and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter, with hard labor and brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. In, in their hard labor, the Egyptians used them ruthlessly. So um, the king was so worried about how many Hebrews there were and the slavery um, was Pharaoh's attempt to take control of them and to um, be mean to them and make them work for free. And um, the Hebrews' lives there were just really bad because they were just, they didn't, they couldn't do anything but work. That's all they could do all day long. And um, so it was just really a hard time for the, the Hebrews. But I think somebody is going to help them. But you have to come back next week to find out how Moses helps them, okay? So um, he grew up as a prince because he was in the um, under the king, and so the king adopted him. Because you remember, uh, his mother put him in a basket, put him in the river, and then he floated down, and uh, the king's daughter found him and said, oh, I need somebody to take care of him. And so his mother, Moses' mother, was like, I can take care of him. And so um, anyway, it's just a really neat story that she got to take care of her own son and um, had him grow up in that uh, type of environment. And then he does such great things for God. So, all right, so this week, you go do great things for God. And then we're going to find out next week what Moses did, okay? All right, y'all have a great week.